Welcome to the Low Code Show. I'm your host, Russell Youngblood. And in this episode, episode eight, we are going to continue building on the foundation for the mobile application that we created in the last episode. So if you're ready to continue building a mobile application in Out Systems, let's do it. So in episode seven, we had created the mobile application and we've already added some data that we can work with. So we'll go ahead and add a new screen. And for the first screen, we're going to use a template and that will be one of the gallery templates. So we'll take a look at the different gallery templates. I like this one, this should work, the product gallery. I'll change the name real quick. And then click the create screen button and that will create the screen from the template but it's also going to drive some sample data into the screen. So we'll take a look at that under the data layer. You can see here's our product data, and then the sample data has the sample product entity. So in this example, our data is going to be very similar. So we can easily drag and drop to swap out the data, but you can see that we have one error message, and that's going to be related to the title of the screen. So what's happening here is that OutSystems is looking for some data that we're no longer using in the sample data. So I'm just going to change this expression value to a text string. And we'll close that out, and that looks pretty good. So next step, what we want to do is make some other adjustments to the interface layer on the specific screen. You can see there's a number of different elements that have been created to support this screen. So some of these we do not need. I'm going to delete the input variable. We no longer need that. There's an action here that we're not going to need, the get products by category on after fetch. And as soon as I delete this client action, you can see that there is a warning message that we need to take care of. So if I double click on that, it should take me over to the aggregate on after fetch event. Uh, which is trying to fetch that action. So it's no longer there. So we'll go ahead and delete that. And uh, for now, that's pretty clean. A couple of other adjustments that we need to make to the screen. Probably best if we open up the widget tree and drill down. And you can see the card background here. We're going to add the image widget into the background container of that card background. So drag and drop that real quick. And then of course, we're gonna need to change the type. This will be coming from an external URL. And then we just need to point to the data that will be adding the image to the screen. So that should be the basics of what we need for this particular screen. One other change here, I'm going to set the screen to anonymous so that we can very quickly preview it in the browser. And then we don't have to worry about uh, logging into the application to see the screen. So we'll click the one click publish button and we'll go ahead and publish the changes to the server. And it's interesting to note here that when I preview this in the browser, there's a couple of ways that we can test. We can of course test right here in the browser and everything looks good. Uh, but then over to the right hand side in the upper corner, you can also see uh, the enable PWA button. And if I go back into Service Studio, I can toggle the switch to distribute this application as a PWA. Now that means progressive web application. And I'll do another video soon on the more on a little bit more detail on the differences between mobile and PWA. But for now, if we toggle this switch, you can see that there is a code that we can scan with the mobile device. So I'll go ahead and grab my iPhone and use the camera feature to scan this QR code. You can see very quickly that OutSystems uh, picks up that code. We can actually now begin to test the app on our local device. So now you have the option to test in the browser or on your device. Okay, let's go ahead and build the second screen back over to the interface layer. I'm gonna right click and choose the add screen option again and, and you can see the templates here. This time I'll choose the details section and here's a product detail screen. This looks good. It's exactly what we need. I'm gonna click the create screen button. And once again, OutSystems will create the screen with some sample data that we can work with. But we have our own data, so I'm gonna go back over to the data layer and then simply drag and drop the product entity. It's going to swap the data based on the type and the name of each attribute. And everything's fine with the exception of the error for the image. So once again, instead of pointing to binary data, we're gonna change this to a URL. 
And the picture attribute is what we're going to be looking for. One other thing that we need to change, we have an entity here that we're no longer using that comes from the template that we used to create this screen. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. And now everything looks good in the true change window and everything is clean. So we should have the product gallery screen, which eventually will link to this product detail screen. So we'll go ahead and check the anonymous checkbox so that once again, we don't have to log in to preview this screen. We'll go ahead and roll that up, go back over to the product gallery screen. And of course, what we want to do is create a, a an flow here where the user can click on the product and that will take them to the product detail screen. So we're to select the container, link it on over to the product detail screen. And when we do that, you'll notice that we need to pass over the product ID because of course that's going to be what is used to filter the product detail screen and show the details of the correct product. So uh, we'll go ahead and click the one click publish button. We'll publish this up to the server. And remember when we do this, it saves a new version of the application on the server, but at any point in time, we can back up to a previous version. So uh, we'll preview it in the browser real quick and test it out. We should be able to see all of the different products. We can click on a product that should take us to the product detail screen where we can see all of the details of that product. Okay, moving on to screen number three, I'm going to right click on the main flow, choose the add screen option, but this time instead of using a pre-built template. I'm just going to start with the empty template, give it the name home screen, and we'll build out this new screen. Now, as you can guess, this will actually be the home screen of our application. So I'm going to right click on that icon in the interface layer and choose mark as default screen. And that should take care of that. Uh, now we can continue to build out the screen. I'm going to go ahead and give it a title and uh, we'll just choose uh, maybe uh, products for the title here, uh, product catalog, maybe that'd be good. And I'm going to go back over to the data layer, drag and drop the product entity. And you can see when I drag it out to the screen that it adds quite a few data points, all of the attributes here, but I don't need all of them. So I'm going to delete a few of these and just leave the description price and a larger title. Let me go ahead and clean this up here under the interface layer. And this is the data that we're going to need, but I think that we're also going to want an image on this screen. So we'll drag and drop the image widget, bring it up to the top, and we'll need to make those adjustments in the properties as well to set it to external URL and then uh, find that attribute. And this looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to make some changes here because I really want a product catalog list. And here we have the image. We also have the expressions. And to make this a little bit cleaner, I'm going to enclose each of these in its own container. So we will put the image in one container and the associated text in another container. Now we can use, we can now use the styles panel to position these so that they are side by side. Now we're dealing with a 12 column layout. So I'm going to set the first container to four columns, set the second one to eight, eight plus four is 12. And then we'll add a little bit of padding, maybe some, maybe 10 pixels to kind of position the text over to the right just a little bit. And I think that that looks really good for a list item. Now, typically in a mobile device on a list item screen like this, we would have a uh, right action swipe or a left action swipe. And conveniently, OutSystems has an icon in the upper left hand area which will allow us to add these actions to the screen. So I'm going to, in this case, choose left action. I'm going to add the left action, go to the properties, and you can see there's an on click event. And so whenever the user clicks on this, we can send them to the product detail screen and we'll need to pass over the product ID as well when they go to that screen. So uh, that should pretty uh, work pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and change the text here instead of action. We will update that text to view details. And now the user can swipe left, they'll see the view details option, and then they'll be able to go on over to the detail screen. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to make one more change before we publish again. Under the common, I'm going to choose the menu block and simply drag and drop the screens from the main flow over to the common block. Once again, that's under the common flow. 
And all you need to do is drag and drop those. It will create the links for you. And now we can test the app, we can browse about, and we can always go back to the main menu to navigate back to any screens that we need to see. Okay, testing in the browser. Things look pretty good here. We should have our list screen. We can also go to the main menu and we can navigate to the product gallery from there. So on both of these screens, we should be able to click through and get to the detail screen. And in the next episode, what we will do is we will download a Forge component and add a QR code reader so that we can use that in the app to quickly find the product that we need. So stay tuned and we'll see you in the next episode. Hey, thanks so much for watching this OutSystems tutorial at the Low Code Show. If you like what you saw, there's going to be more. Please subscribe, Twitter.com, The Low Code Show, YouTube.com, The Low Code Show, and of course, Facebook.com, The Low Code Show.